Hello, my name is Tyler McMinn with Aruba Networks, and this is the Network Essentials video course, part two. In fact, this is the final video in our part two series, where in the previous video, we created our link aggregation lab and actually got that to work and validated. So our network is working, everything is bridging across, everything looks great. In this last final video, we are gonna break all that. As promised, what we're going to do is we're going to move PC4 into another VLAN. And remember the rule, whenever you move from one VLAN to another, you're almost always going to change the subnet that you belong to, as each subnet belongs to its own unique VLAN in a properly designed network. So we're going to update the IP address of PC4, and then we're going to check and see what happens if we try and ping from PC1 over here on the left-hand side through our access switch across one or the other of our link aggregated ports. We can uh, now with confidence draw little link aggregation loops there and reach access to are we going to be able to have our pings work, which includes the response pings coming back from PC4? Will this work or will it won't? I'm gonna jump into PC4, and on PC4, the address I originally had, show IP, we've got 172.16.99.4, and 99 happened to be the VLAN number I was using. It doesn't need to match, but we might as well. In our case, we're gonna move it to VLAN 20. So you might ask yourself, okay, well, how would I move that to a different VLAN? Easy enough. Changing the IP address is simple, but I need to make sure my switch is pushed over to that VLAN as well. So I would go to my access switch and we would change our port 114, the port that's plugging into our PC. I would change that to access VLAN 20. So first, if it's been a while, I may not remember exactly how we configured that in the first place. So let's go to our access switch and I could do a show run, and rather than looking through the whole running config or doing a pipe command to include or begin, I can simply put in the interface I'm interested in. I'm interested in port four facing my PC, so I'll do a show run interface four. And look at that, it prints out just that section for that interface, where the command we used previously was VLAN access 99. Okay, what I wanna do is move it to another VLAN. What VLANs do I have configured? I have VLAN 20 configured globally on this switch. But is it trunked allowing VLAN 20 across? Well, I know it's there, so let's go ahead and while I'm here, let's configure the port. I can just do a configure command. And let's go under interface 114. And according to my last configuration, I used VLAN access and the VLAN number. So let's do the same thing here, VLAN access and instead of VLAN, 99, let's use the VLAN we have globally configured, VLAN 20. I've already moved the IP address over to a different unique subnet. 172.16.20 sounds good to me. So I should be good. Let's see then if I can ping from PC1 on the left-hand side over to PC4. Before I was pinging 172.16.99.4, but now I have a new subnet it's in. PC1 still has its 99 address. This PC4 is in VLAN 20, so it's 172.16.20.4. No gateway found. Hmm. So maybe the problem is that we didn't permit it across this link aggregation. Maybe our trunking is incorrect. Our VLANs have not been extended. Well, or it could be that the VLAN doesn't exist on PC1. So let's go to access one, or not PC1, but access one and check our VLANs there. Our VLANs here, we've got VLAN 20, just like we do on Access 2. They both have the same VLANs, VLAN 20 and 99, VLAN 20 and 99. What was the command to check your trunk links? Show interface trunk. I'm allowing all VLANs on the left, that includes VLAN 20. Show interface trunk on the right, and we're allowing all there too for this link aggregation. So the VLANs are in place, they're assigned properly. VLAN 99 is assigned to my switch on the left and VLAN 20 is assigned to my switch on the right. So let's draw that, 99 on the left, 20 on the right. And they're both allowed to pass if they need to 
from one side to the other, so why can't I ping from PC1 to PC4? What does this mean, no gateway found? This is a problem that's gonna come up when you wanna leave your local area network. Up until this point, all through part one and all the labs there, and part two and all the labs there, we've been dealing with a local area network. And what we wanna do is connect from one local area network, specifically the 172.16.99 network, and we call the name of the network the zero address. It's the first address in our range of addresses, of host addresses that we have um, that are identified. And we want to go to a different, we want to go to a different local area network here with PC4 now belonging to 172.16.99, not 99, not 99 but in fact, 20.0 slash 24. So PC4 is part of this local area network and PC1 is part of this other local area network. And two local area networks cannot talk to each other unless they have some sort of gateway. The other word we're gonna use to describe this is a router. That's what we've been missing. Part three is where we're gonna discuss how exactly to create a router or a gateway function, how to establish your own static routes, and ultimately how to enable a protocol similar to spanning tree, similar to link aggregation or LACP, how to enable a protocol for routing. In this case, the OSPF or open shortest path, pass first protocol. So that's gonna be it. As a wrap up for part two, I hope you guys enjoyed this series of videos on part two uh, where we discussed the basics of VLANs. We talked about access and trunk ports utilizing the protocol 802.1Q and loops, how to deal with them, why they're a good thing in the sense of redundancy, but a bad thing in that they can bring down your entire switching network unless you're running spanning tree. And with that, you can improve the optimization by enabling link aggregation as a protocol. So next, we cover the layer three, we cover routing, and we get ourselves fully functional local area network. So again, my name is Tyler McMinn. I'll see you guys in part three, where we are going through a series of videos on how to set up routing and gateways. Thank you very much for your time. I'll see you in the next one.